할렐루야. 할렐루야. 반갑습니다. It's good to see you. I welcome everyone online or offline to this time of gospel school on this Thursday night. We all come from different walks of life and the emotions that we encounter this week or today may be very different. And despite the differences, We have one thing in common, which is that our Jesus loves us all. Regardless of who we are, if we remain in Jesus, we are still beautiful and we are still precious. That's how God looks at us. And I wish that would be your thought about you. that you are loved, that you are valued. And that's how our God thinks of you. Before we go into worship, I wish that you would soak your heart in God's love and hold on to the thought, to the truth that God really loves us and He likes us. And let God to do amazing things in you as we go through our worship and praise. When we go before God, one thing that I want to remember and pray is that none of us here is able to predict what our lives are going to be. No one can really predict their futures. Whatever happened today cannot determine what tomorrow is going to be. And that's why we have so many worries so many anxieties. And that's kind of true for everybody. But we have to remember that we have hope and gospel, which is our Jesus. Even though we already know this, I just want to emphasize that as we go into the time of worship, that you would remember your Jesus. All the worries, all the anxieties, leave those behind. Behind. Cast all your worries onto Jesus. I know you're so full of thoughts, you're so full of worries and anxieties, but remember this one fact, one truth. Jesus is here. Jesus loves us. Because of that, there's no need for me to hold on to all these worries and suffer. We don't have to act like people who don't know Jesus. I want you to be liberated by this thought, by this presence of Jesus. And just pray. to God. Lord, I know that Jesus is here and the thought of Jesus being here with me gives me a sense of freedom even though I cannot predict how my, how my life will go. I know that you are here. You'll be with me. You'll be my future. You'll be my hope. You'll be my solution. You'll be my strength. Lord, be with me. Let's pray. Let's go before God. Let's pray. Oh Lord, oh my good Lord. I cannot predict my life, a second of it, a minute of it. So Lord, I hold on to you, I hang on to you. Lord, you are here today. You are here today. Yes, Lord, you are here. The Jesus is here with us. Lord, all the worries, all the frustrations I bring to you when I do that, 
come Holy Spirit and cover me satisfy me so that I may lack no nothing I may need nothing oh Holy Spirit help us Lord I pray that all the people who desire to come to you Lord please be with them I proclaim in the name of Jesus that all of us will see Jesus as our Savior and everything that prevents us from doing that will be washed away, will be broken away by the name of Jesus. I pray that our spirit will be awakened by our hope and that we would remember that Jesus was here with us and he would pour out his grace and anything that prevents us from proclaiming, confessing our faith, Lord, may that be broken away by your strength, by your presence. And help us be liberated. And help us know that God is here with us. God who's with me knows me. And God who knows me loves me. And God who knows me understands me. And God who understands me understands all my pains. And He empathizes. And He who empathizes proclaims victory. Lord, I pray that we may open up our hearts and bring all of our lives to you. Lord, and when we do that, I pray that we would hear your voice, your immediate voice, that you are here with us, that you will take care of us. Lord, I pray for this time. I love you. I pray in the name of Jesus.
Let's stream God's wishes and pray. We have a lot of dreams, wishes for us. Maybe something to soothe our pain. But as we praise just now, if God wishes, His wishes are for people across the world who are suffering, who are in pain, if that's where God's heart is, we wish to make your wish come true. We wish to do your will. Whatever you wish to do, Lord, I pray that your will may be done. And I pray that you will do what you want, Lord. Father God, we pray for your wishes, we pray for your dreams, where your heart is, and we pray that your desires will come true. We wish to look where you look, Lord. We wish to care about what you care about, Lord. Father, as we go through this gospel school, we have to confess that our life hasn't changed much, it's still hard, but we get up again, we bring ourselves up again. And we pray for our well-being, for us to be better. But we also pray for your desires, for your wishes. And as we do that, we will know that everything that you wish, every desire you have, we will encounter and be able to fulfill that in our life. And then see that your dreams come true and your wishes and your hope for me will come true. And as we do that, I pray that we would encounter, we would discover the fun, the joy of the spiritual life. And as we come before you, I pray that we would listen to you and listen to your gospel and then really Be humbled by what you have to say and be with you, Lord. Amen. It's good to see you. Today is the fifth lecture of the Gospel School. The school will probably be the first school to be released to the public. So some of you might be listening to it now, some of you later. But after today, we're going to take a pause, switch gears to a different school, focused on knowing God's heart, but our desire is to return to the Gospel School and continue to learn how the Gospel is not a philosophy or science, but it's something that strengthens us and nourishes our spirit. And I want us to continue to learn the depth and the joy of this Gospel given by our God. As we start today, I want to look at this this verse from Habakkuk, Habakkuk 3.2. 
O oh Lord, I have heard the report of you and your work. O oh Lord, do I fear. In the midst of the years, revive it. In the midst of the years, make it known. Amen. The title of today's lecture is This is Revival. So we've had four lectures. This is love. This is salvation. This is the way. This is the light. Today it's this is the revival. When we think about the word revival, and we try to find it in the Bible, it occurs only once in this um, Habakkuk. But there are many different places where the meaning of revival is embodied. We read the verse from Habakkuk that reflects Habakkuk's desire for revival. And I want to ask you, what do you think revival is? What does it mean? Well, it's not really used outside of the church. So revival may be related to success, well-being, restoration. We don't use it that often. But we might think of it as something better than what we have right now. Growth, getting bigger, getting more popular. It is used a lot in church. So when we say the, the church is reviving, the church is going through a revival, that could mean you know a church getting more popular, growing bigger, sending more missionaries. So whatever, you know, whether it's ministry or your work, revival could mean a growth of what's current. As we think about what revival is, I want to delve into this question. How do we experience, how do we receive revival? So how does revival come about? Revival is a good thing. Is there anybody who maybe is against revival? So maybe some. But generally, it is something that is desired. So we want revival to happen. We want to be revived. But how can we make it come? So as we think about the meaning of the revival and also how to make it come or how to receive it, we would be able to reflect on our lives and then figure out how to go on about lives. So we can maybe take a look at the different ministries that experienced great revival. That could be a start. Um, but there are two events that we call, we refer to as the Great Revival. The first one is the one that took place in 1904 in Wales, in the UK. It is the Great Revival of Wales. So in Wales, in 1904, amazing things happened. It wasn't just a church that got transformed, it was the entire region. Not just every church, but every bar that sold alcohol shut off their business because the gospel was 
delivered, the gospel spread, and everybody repented, including those who owned those businesses, who frequented those businesses. They all repented and they stopped. Supposedly, the hospitals also closed because there was such healing, miraculous healing, that there was no need for people to go to the hospital anymore. Not only did people believe in the Christ, but this whole region changed and miraculous things happened. So based on this, this is a great revival. So imagine our town, Dobong, think about maybe every person in Dobong area repenting, stopping, suspending anything that is not pleasing to God, coming to God, if that were to happen, wow, that's amazing, right? But such thing happened in Wales. That's why we call it the Great Revival. And the, the Wales, the Welsh Revival did not stop just there, but it led to other things. It rose up a lot of missionaries. Some of them came to Korea. Some of them sacrificed their lives on this land. Missionaries who were very valued in their nation for their intelligence, for their potential. These people decided to go to a strange land, foreign land, and give up their lives for their God. Don't you want this to happen? Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe you are dreaming of something different. Anyway, so this happened in 1904. But it didn't just happen out of nowhere. Remember, our questions today, what is revival and how does revival come about? Does it just come in a moment? So you wake up and then there's revival? No, it's not like that. What is the starting point? What was the starting point? And in order to get to that starting point, we have to talk about Flory Evans, a 17-year-old girl. Isn't her name pretty? So Flory Evans, the year before 1904, so in 1903, she was at a place called Tabernacle Temple, which wasn't really a formal church, but it was more of a gathering place for people she went to this tabernacle temple and, and the revival really took place or it started off here. And I wish we would be able to, after the coronavirus is over, that we would be able to gather and then pray like Flory Evans did. And the people came to tabernacle temple after their work, after their studies, they came and prayed. And Flory Evans, who was sitting in the back, she walked up to the front. She goes to the front. And, you know, thinking of her age, she probably wasn't really used to, or she wasn't an experienced orator. But she boldly 
담대하고 그러나 떨리는 목소리로 진중하게 and confessed. 고백을 합니다. And she made this particular confession which inspired this song. I have included the words here. Love you, Lord, with all my heart. And this is the song that was inspired by her confession. So that's the English uh, words to the song Love You Lord with All My Heart and she made a confession. This was the beginning. We don't really have detailed records of what took place, but based on what is available. As soon as Flory Evans made this confession, people were just swept away. Things exploded. There was such spirit taking over that place to the extent that people who were there, they did not go back home, but they were just in that place taken over by the spirit full of inspiration, full of God's Holy Spirit. That was the beginning. And for the next year, for a whole year, this, this small event of such magnitude is spread and really brought on the Spirit of God on whole whales. What an amazing event. So what happened to Flory Evans? What made her do that? And just because she said that confession that happened, we will, we will um, visit this. We're going to think about this um, later. But for now, I would like to take a look at the 1907 Pyongyang Great Revival. Pyongyang Revival took over, it swept away the whole country, the whole peninsula. Everybody who was there repented, and that repentance, wave of repentance, spread, and then it just kind of took over the whole country. The people who observed it, they were amazed because nothing of such event had been experienced before. The entire country coming to God, coming to repentance. So it was an amazing sight for all to see. According to the sources that are available, a four-year-old made prophecies. And one of those prophecies was that Korea would play a significant role in spreading the gospel to the rest of the world. And that is kind of true based on um, what's happening currently. So a lot of things happened. And 
So when we talk about the Great Revival, we refer to the one in Wales and then the one in Pyongyang. Because these two revivals were such amazing sights to see that they are referred to as great. So how did they come about? So with Pyongyang, there were three key figures. The first one is Hardy, who's a missionary from America, and two other people, Kang Tae-su and Jin Chun-su. These were local Koreans who worked with missionaries as they built schools, hospitals, spread gospel. They helped missionaries do their work by supporting them. So these are really good people, right? They dedicated their lives to the gospel for supporting those who work to spread the gospel. But as we know, not everybody is perfect. We are not perfect. Although we come here to worship and we praise, but we know that we have sinful thoughts and we do sinful things. So they were kind of similar. Missionary Hardy, according to records, was a very fastidious person. He was a perfectionist. And prior to coming to missions, he also believed in white supremacy. So he came, right? to this Korea and imagine how hard it must have been for him, right? He was used to all these things, convenient things. He came to Korea and people don't even understand the language. You can't have a conversation. Traditions are very different, different cultures. So a lot of things he had to get used to, right? By being in a different environment with different people. So Hardy thought that maybe Korean people were not very polished. And the Korean, the locals who were helping missionaries, they also felt kind of proud that they were the people who were chosen to support these white missionaries. So they were maybe condescending towards other local people. So they weren't perfect. But during one service, when Hardy was supposed to give a sermon, he just weeped. He said what was on his mind, that he did not love, he did not feel compassionate toward the people that he was supposed to love and value. And he looked down on the Korean people, that he was a sinner. He weeped and confessed. And as soon as he did that, the two people, the Koreans, who were in the supporting role, they also confessed their sins. And as soon as they started repenting and confessing their sin, the spirit of repentance 
spread about and people just came before God humbled confessing all the sinful thoughts sinful heart they all repented and that wave of repentance continued across the entire Korean country and that is the start of the great Pyongyang revival. So when we think about, when we talk about these revivals, these weren't started by people as a movement, but it started with a confession and this spirit just took over. I pray that such revival will take place in our lives, in our generation. So at the time of Pyongyang revival, Korea was not a very great place to be. But the people who depended on other good things, they came to know God as the sole provider, sole defender, and they confessed that God is greater above everything. And I pray that this will happen in our time, in our generation. Instead of fighting with ideology, with philosophy, that we would come before God humbled and repent. I wish to really see this kind of revival and I hope that we will get to witness such revival. So I just um, introduced to you two revivals, two events that we refer to as revival. And we also talked about how this revival comes about. Uh, we talked about how Flory Evans, her confession, started off this revival. How she confessed that she loves the Lord with all her heart. And in Pyongyang, with the missionary Hardy and the two Koreans, their confessions, how those set off the revival. Confession and the repentance. So then, how does revival come about? Does it come when we confess our love for God? Does it come when we repent? So, 100 years from 1907, in 2007, which isn't that far ago, so there was an aspiration among people who wished to really commemorate the Pyongyang Great Revival of Pyongyang 100 years ago, wishing for it to maybe come back again. And there was a song that a lot of people sang, wishing for the return of the Great Revival. So in 2007, there was a great desire among people wishing to witness revival once more. So thinking back to how Missionary Hardy, his confession started this revival, so people came to repent in 2007. 
And people repented. But I think what people really wanted was really this great revival that would sweep away the country. But the 2007, the gathering, it did not meet up to the expectation. People repented, people yearned for revival, but the, it just did, you know, wasn't the great revival of 1907. So people started wondering, in 1907, with repentance, Revival happened, but it didn't this time. So how does revival come about? What is revival? So today, I want to come back to this thought. What is revival? And how do we do it? The great revival of Wales in 1903 started with the confession of Flora Evans. And 1907's revival starting with Hardy's confession because we see these as these events we cannot understand the depth of this revival what really happened is because the God Holy Spirit Jesus knocked on Flory Evans' heart. Do you really love me? Do you really love me with all your heart? You don't worry about anything else, but you care about me, you love me. And Flora Evans made that confession. She got up, she went out, and she was overcome by God's love, God's inspiration, and made the confession. And that was unusual. She gave herself to God. She let go of any of her own thoughts and submitted to God's knock, God's inspiration and confessed her love. And Missionary Hardy, he also got up, he went up, and he just spilled his heart. He let go of his own thoughts and he confessed his sinful nature. He responded to the invitation of the Holy Ghost to open up his heart and let go of himself. So we gotta really understand this. Going to the front, going up to the stage, confessing, 
your love for God and repenting, that, that is not, that action isn't what makes the revival happen. What it is is that these people, even though it was really hard, it, even though it wasn't easy for them to make the confession, make the repentance, they did it. They responded to God. They did it because God wanted it. They responded to God's wish, God's desire. So, does repentance lead to revival? Does confession of love for God lead to revival? No. If there's something that God wants and something that God wants a person to do at a particular time and that person does it, that's what God wants. That's what leads to revival. So repentance in and of itself is not the essence, but doing what God wants to have done at a particular time is the key to revival. So people pray, people yearn for revival. But when we look at people who experience revival, they have something in common. So the people who experience revival, they themselves really did not dream of revival, but they desire to do what God wanted them to do today. The people who were at the center of revival, they did not yearn for, they did not pray for revival. Apart from revival, they really sought to live the way God wanted them to live. They were focused on knowing what God wanted for them and they were interested in doing God's will. And that became a starting point of a revival. So what is revival? Deciding to do what God wants me to do today and desiring to know what God wants me to do and becoming that person who desires to do God's will, to listen to His desire. That is revival. And us doing God's will, us trying to do God's will may not lead to a revival of such great scale every time. You know, it may not happen. But what God sees is really God seeing His desire being carried out by the people that He's appointed. So it doesn't matter whether we end up with a great revival or a you know, small revival. Doing His will today is the start. Habakkuk says, Lord, I have heard the report of you, and your work, O Lord, do I fear. In the midst of the years, revive it. 
In the midst of the years, make it known. When we think of revival, we think of the things that might happen as a result of revival. More people in the church that would be referred to as revival. If our church grew in numbers, has a you know big building, then people would call it a revival. And what happens when such things happen? The senior pastors will probably go around the country sharing messages of how does revival come about. We call that revival. But what does the Bible say? Habakkuk, Prophet Habakkuk says, He is not the one who designs revival. But he says, it is the work of the Lord. Your work that he fears. So revival is not you know, some amazing things is happening. But revival is letting go of the consequences of the fruits, of the results that I want for myself. Letting go of those thoughts those hold, but listening, really tuning into what God wants to say, what God wants to see, tuning into that, that is revival. That is the revival of our life. Think about it. Does not does God not want the church to revi- to be revived? A lot of people repenting, a lot of people believing God, bars closing. Does he hate that? Wouldn't that please God? Why? Why then? Why don't they happen? Because we tend to dream of revival. In earthly terms, we don't know what God's revival might be. What we can do, the best we can do, is to submit ourselves to God and to live lives that God wants, to be pleasing to Him. But we're so boxed in. Our prayer is about my immediate pain, right? Our prayer is to get over that immediate pain that we have. We spent so much effort, so much of our spirit in trying to overcome this immediate pain. And if you're not feeling well, you spend so much energy, so much of you to pray for that well-being, right? Your job, your studies, anything that really bothers you, that makes your life painful, your prayer, you spend so much effort in trying to address this pain, to overcome this pain, and we call this the prayer. But gospel isn't that. Christianity isn't that. Despite the pain, 
하나님께 또 That is immediate to us. 기도하고 있을지라도 Of course we pray, right? We we pray for his blessings. 설고 일어나서 하나님 앞에 but 서서 the gospel Christianity is to go beyond that pain but to stand up and to seek God's will to seek God's plan His desire for me today and to listen to Him and to remain by His side and, and, and this will be a wrestle, right? If it was easy for us to do, then God probably, you know, would not make this hard, right? He would not have made it this hard. But what you want, and what God wants, there, there's such conflict, there's such a fight, there's wrestling. Revival is living out God's desire, living out God's will, living out His hope, and there's life. 그런데 내가 나에게 살갑게 맞다 있는 이것을 가지고 계속해서 기도하고 But when we try to live out our own will our own prayer request There's a chance that we will get lost. There's no life. 어 그래서 여러분 솔직히 So, people who make a good earning probably will make a good earning without prayer. There's revival in that person's life, right? There's money, right? Isn't that revival? If our business, if our career takes off, is that revival? Is our God less than that? Is that why He can't show us revival? No. It's because revival is different. You have to be proud of living the way God wants. You have to be proud of wrestling so that you can live the way God wants. We cannot stop. Even if there's pain, we cannot remain in that pain. We have to constantly strive to do what God wants. When we say Christianity, when we say religion, we think about praying, right? Praying is talking with a God. And we pray, right? Everybody prays. For blessings. And I pray, I encourage you to choose revival. Even if it, you know, even if it's not the great revival, be proud of walking in that revival. Be proud of not harping on your pain but wanting to submit to God, to let go of yourself and following God. 
And I hope that there will be great revival. But even if there isn't, if you live every day of your life with that mission, with that effort, wanting to live out God's will, that is great revival. Our prayer is not to overcome our own difficulties. It is for us to hear what God wants from us today. So I often remain in the church and then pray alone. So I want to tell you one thing that happened to me um, because this is related to the topic of prayer. Um, so those of you who are familiar with the location of the church, um, you know that there is a parking tower where I was trying to park. And the tower is designed in a way that it is very tight, so it's very hard for people to bring their cars in and out. And you have to maneuver your car really well, um, especially if your car is not a tiny car. Um, and today, I was having that struggle. Um, on top of that, I saw that there was a, a woman who was kind of in my way. She was organizing recycling. And it was really hard, so I decided that I might back out instead of interrupting um, what she was doing. But of course, it, it was not very easy to back out, so I was kind of stuck. So she saw that I was stuck, and so she tried to move her bike with the recycling to another spot so that I would be able to get in. And seeing how she was trying to move her bike, I, I stopped my car and I got out um, because I wanted to be helpful, help her move this bike. The bike already had a really huge pile of stuff on it. And it was really heavy for her to move, right? So. You know, I, I try to give her a hand, but I ended up not being all that helpful. And she, she saw that I wasn't being helpful. And ultimately what happened is that she basically undid everything I did and she let the bike tumble down and the recycling tumbled down and she started putting the recycling back on the bike and moved the bike eventually. And you know, I felt, I felt bad. I was trying to do a good thing, I had a good intention, but I didn't do a good job. And the second time she was trying to organize this, I you know, was hesitant to help because she probably, you know, I lost my credibility. I parked my car and I apologized, I came to church. So, so this really happened to me, and when I pray, I bring to God these matters, these emotions of regret, things that I should have done, things that should have gone one way. I mean, why did I do that with my car today with the women? Every day, you have to bring those matters to God and remain 
혹시 저에게 말씀하고 싶은 것이 있습니까? And ask God. 하나님 혹시 제가 Lord, is there anything that you wish to tell me? 그래서 이런 장면을 보면서 혹시 제가 가져야 되는 생각이 있습니까? 혹은 제가 From all that happened today for the things with the things that happened, is there anything that you wish to tell me? 저한테도 예, 정말 당장 Of course, you have struggles. You have things that are really hard that you want to address, and I do too. I have things that I want to pour out to God. But I pause, and I tell God, Lord, if there's something that you wish to tell me with the events that happened today. Please let me know. I wish to know. And you do what you tell him, or what he tells you. And if he tells you to rest, you rest. And if there's something that you wish me to do, I wish that would be revived. I wish to carry out your desire. So, we sang um, three praise songs today, and the last one is called New Song. And that song was written by me. And I'm embarrassed to share. I wrote this song at a time when we were doing a school in Gangnam. So we would do the school in the morning and then again in the night. So I would do the school in the morning, take a short break, and then do the school at night. So it was exhausting. So the church that we were renting, um, they were kind. So um, they let me stay in one of the offices so that I could take a break between the morning and the night schools. And so this was a day when after the morning school, I had lunch and then as I was about to enter that room, the office to rest, I noticed that I had a, I had a thought, right? I noticed that God had given me a planted a thought. So instead of lying down, which I usually do to take a break, I sat. And I inquired, God, is there anything that you wish to tell me? I wish that to be done. And confessed. And what God gave me, the inspiration He gave me, He told me, write a song. Under one condition, you have to do it in the one hour and 40 minutes, the break, the length of your break between the morning and the night school. And I am thinking, I was thinking, how can, how can a person write a song in one hour and 40 minutes? It's not like I had any foresight to do this. So it was really weird. I was taken aback. And he told me that I would write this song today, and then the next day, I would have to sing this song. 
And I cannot add anything between now and tomorrow. And, you know, it was pretty easy for me to see that the song that I would create, if I would, would be a terrible song. And I kept pondering, God, what is it that you want me to do? What is it that you want me to hear? I kept pondering. And it occurred to me, regardless of how beautiful, how terrible the song is, can I confess that God will use this song to do His good? Can God work through my inadequacies? Can He use the song? Does He have the ability? Does He have the strength, power? Yes. And my answer was yes, God can. God can use God can use me regardless of how able I am. Even if my song that I create in an hour and 40 minutes is of terrible quality, God can use it and God can do whatever He wants. Even if I cannot picture how He would work, He can, he can use it. He can do whatever he wants. So I just wanted to confess this new song, right? New thing, new real, new realization that God can work through anything. So the song is called New Song. Writing a song sounds like such um, petty thing, right? Of little significance. But if God asks me to do it, then I do it. So, when God asks you to do something, you may have all these things, right? That prevent you from doing it. But you still do it because God can do it. He will make things happen, right? He will do His miracles regardless of what I am capable of. So that became my confession. And I turned that into a song. My new confession. So there are times when our praise team will sing the songs that I have written, I wrote. I think they're being nice. So if we just consider the results, nothing happened because of the song that I wrote in 2017, right? We sang it today, but you know, that song in and of itself didn't do anything. But, but I was I experienced great revival, right? God wanted me to write this song. God wanted me to submit his desire, his wish at that time, at that particular time. And I submitted to God. I accepted what He asked of me.
And that is great revival. And when you continue, when you walk in that way, you become a person of great revival. And that is what revival is about. As we go on a hiatus after today's lecture, I want to, you know, tell you, everybody, we are won over by, you know, great things, but God, His Son, Jesus, He always brought Himself to isolation, and He revived himself by letting go of himself. I wish you would also strive for that. Even if you're going through a difficult time, through a challenging time, I encourage you to really strive for that moment, for that prestige, and be proud of doing God's will and asking what God wants you to do. So this is a song that I'm embarrassed to sing, right? Because I wrote it. But I want to remember, I want to remember back to that time and make my confession. If you're feeling like your faith isn't growing, it's at a standstill. I encourage you to you know, think about whether you are really living that life of revival. And I encourage you, I support you as you wrestle, as you wrestle to live that prestigious Christian life seeking what God has to say, letting go of yourself. Even if what you are capable of doing may be so little, so nothing, but if God wants you to do it, you'll do it. You'll be that person to please Him. You'll make that confession. And that confession is the revival. And I pray that we would confess our willingness, our wish to do so.
하나님 것 없는 곳에 생명의 빛을 비춰 주십시오. Pray together, Father God, pour out your perspective, your insight, so that I would lead a prestigious, godly Christian life. Glory Evans of Wales and Hardy in Pyongyang, they did not do what they wanted. They acted upon the heart that you gave. They acted upon the thoughts from you. 
They submitted to the littlest of your wishes. But they are prestigious, they are proud Christians. They are at the heart of great revival. Regardless of the struggles, the difficulties you're going through, I wish that you would not be boxed in by your situations, by realities, but really seek out the gospel, seek out what God values. And submit to God and let God, His victory, overcome you. Through your little struggle with your submission, may God proclaim His victory over all the earth. Let's pray. Lord Father God, may you awaken our spirits. May we become Christians who are not disheartened or frustrated, but may we become those bold Christians who respond to you. To walk in revival, to live revived lives.
하나님. Dear God, Flory Evans, Missionary Hardy, not just those people, but God, you dream of revival through all people. But we are still tempted by great things. Want to see more numbers and claim that you are where there's more people, more success. We don't want to be humbled. We want our own ways. Even though we confess that we love you, our lives. What we want in our lives is to get more blessings. And when we don't get those blessings, when we don't get help that we want, we are disheartened, we are frustrated, we are so attentive to our needs and our exhaustion. Lord, the reason we are like this is because we are weak. Have mercy over us. Have mercy and help us love God, really love God, and really desire revival and love your gospel love the truth Lord we go through many different events each day many kinds of events that lead to many different emotions and through those events Help us ask of your wish, of your will, what you want us to hear. And when we do that, when we seek to ask of your wish, when we submit to you, Lord, may you be glorified. Help us be those kinds of pe people. People who you are proud of. Christians that you are pleased with. Lord, until we see you, may we choose this new confession this life this revival encourage us that we may not look to only our needs and our pain but elect to dream of your wish of your desire so that your revival may overflow. May the humility of our Jesus Christ was, was nailed to the cross and He wished to bring great revival and God's love who brought His Son to the cross and the Holy Spirit who helps us, who invites us into that life of truth, of the gospel. May Jesus, may God, may Holy Spirit really help us, inspire us here and those 
around the world so that we may be those Christians, Lord. So I pray that you would remain and then come before our God who loves us and wants to connect with us.
하신 주님 우리의 추악함에도 불구하고 우리의 나약함에도 불구하고 우리의 연약함에도 불구하고 이 시간 주님을 고백합니다 